labor of love guys these are what these cabbage rolls are they came out so perfect especially that i baked them instead of cooking them on the stovetop that made such a big difference and the secret the superstar of this whole recipe is in that stuffing the way i made it the way i dressed it what i put in it you're going to be seeing that in the video later on so let's get started <laughs> So this is probably going to be the most difficult part of this whole recipe. It's getting that core out. Just really make a square with your knife like you see me do here around the core and wiggle your knife back and forth. Sort of put it in on an angle so you can get that core out and then try to scoop it with your knife. And then once you see a little wiggle room, go in there with your hands and just pull that thing right off. I like cutting mine in half just because one, mine was bigger and I like smaller rolls. Here you go, and then you're going to put that in boiling water that's been nicely salted, flipping it every now and then until you have really nice and soft leaves, but you don't want them too soft where they're falling apart. So put that in there, and then while you're at it, you are going to boil one cup of rice for about 10 minutes, okay? We only want that partially cooked. Now, to our ground beef, I have one pound of ground beef. I'm going to add all my spices. All the ingredients and measurements will be listed down in the description, so check that out. I'm going to be adding some pepper paste. I really like adding this in all my stuffings because it adds a nice charred flavor since these peppers were roasted and a nice acidity along with the pomegranate molasses for a touch of sweetness. These two ingredients are what makes the stuffing so good the pomegranate molasses and the red pepper paste if you can't find red pepper paste i do have a recipe you're gonna see it in the eye that pops up at the top of your screen right now i've also added some olive oil and one whole onion i've had two halves in my fridge that's what i'm gonna use but use one whole red onion or yellow onion or white onion whatever you have in the fridge so just going to chop that up nice and fine now along with my regular onion i also like to add some green onions or scallions because i like the variety of color and flavor that it adds and i also like my stuffing to be very green that's why i like to add green onions and parsley i like to to be you know have a variety of color in there so i'm just gonna add a couple of scallions then we're going to need about three to five medium sized tomatoes. As you can see, I am using two knives because my chef's knife is very, very dull. So I am making slices with a serrated knife and then making dices with my chef's knife because a dull knife is a lot more dangerous than a sharp one. So I'm just going to use whatever I have to get the job done. Just going to chop that up now like i said i like my stuffing to be very very green so i have a whole bunch of parsley if i had cilantro i would use that too and fresh mint but this is all i had on hand so what i like to do is just bunch it all together and give that a rough chop and then go ahead back and forth until i get a very very fine dice you can put in the stems too they have a lot of flavor and nutritional value so now i'm just gonna run my knife through it horizontally and vertically until i get it as fine as i want it to be this is what it looks like and now i'm just gonna grate in some garlic you can chop it up but because i'm using a lot i find it a lot easier to grate it now you don't have to use seven cloves you can use more you can use less when it comes to things like chocolate cheese and garlic really do what you want don't use a recipe to tell you how much you should put in so now i'm just gonna put in some salt really put a lot of salt because you have a lot of veggies you have the meat and you're gonna have the rice that we're gonna put in in a bit so a good tablespoon will do if you don't want to put salt you can also put chicken bouillon now what we're gonna do now is work everything in with the meat the spices and the veggies all together before we add in the rice and this is crucial for you to do because if we were to work everything with the rice we're gonna break up the rice we're gonna make it way too mushy and 
and it's just gonna have a really um, bad consistency so always work everything in with your meat like you're making meatballs and then we'll go ahead and spoon in our rice after now here is our rice that we have boiled for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's about 75 percent done i am using short grain rice you can also use sushi rice i don't like using long grain rice here because i really want the consistency of it to be sort of um gloopy you know what i mean like stuffing i want it all to clump together and the reason why i partially cook this is because i'm not going to have this on the stove top when I cook it on the stove top, I would cover the pot all the way up with water so that I ensure that the rice will be all the way cooked. But since I'm putting this in the oven, I'm going to have a lower amount of liquid in there just because I want that cabbage to have some color on there. That's why I partially cooked my rice to ensure that it's fully cooked at the end. And as you can see, I am just spooning in and mixing it gently and we don't have to worry about it getting mixed well because we already worked everything in with the meat. And as you can see, it's not mushy, but it still clumps together in one cohesive mixture. And that's exactly what we want. So now I've taken my cabbage halves out of the water and I'm separating the leaves. Ideally, you want to do this when they are completely cooled. But as you see, I am very, very impatient. I was hungry and ready to eat. So I just had the help of two forks separating the layers and burning my fingertips that's okay you really want to make sure that you're not poking any holes in the cabbage leaves while you're separating them with the forks and now we're gonna get to rolling Now, depending on how you cut your cabbage you're gonna get leaves of different size and shapes they might be a bit awkward but the thing to get out of this is just get, getting rid of the ribs or the vein in the middle and then rolling up leaves. You can see here it's very, very small, but I managed to roll it anyways. So cabbage leaves can be very forgiving once they're boiled. You can really uh, manipulate them into any shape or size. As you can see, this is short and bulky. I've gotten ones that were super skinny and long, really different shapes. But since the rice is partially cooked and since the cabbage is boiled for a long time, they're all going to cook evenly at the end. So don't you worry. As you can see, this one was a lot bigger than the other one but I was still able to roll it and everything was fine so a very very easy process even though it is kind of time consuming okay you're gonna want to unhide your kids unhide your husbands and let them come help you unless you don't like anyone in the kitchen with you like me so you're just gonna have to do all the work by yourself okay okay here you can see me getting rid of that rib and sectioning this off into two leaves depending on how big you want your rolls if you want them bigger just leave them like that i want them to be a bit on the small side so i just managed to get leaves out of whatever i could and look at how beautiful that stuffing is and the color how vibrant it is make this stuffing every time you want to stuff cabbages grape leaves zucchini anything and it'll be perfect so here's the scenario of a perfect leaf. You're going to de-rib it. Don't throw those away. Salt, pepper, lemon juice, and have them as a snack. Really, really good. And then we're just going to section this off into three pieces and roll them up. So this is kind of like the ideal scenario of the leaf that you want. But like I said, I was so impatient in the beginning that I just kind of ripped them apart instead of layering them carefully. But that's okay. It all worked out at the end. But just showing you an example of what to do if you had a whole leaf. And now I'm just going to lay an 11 inch round pan with some potatoes. You can use a nine by five rectangle dish or anything you have. It's just better if you have them on a flat layer, two layers max, but whatever you can find, use. So a nice bed of potatoes. And now I'm just starting to lay my cabbage rolls. As you see, I am tightening up the rolls, putting them seam side down so that they don't open up. Keep on putting them right next to each other nice and tightly and as you see they are different shapes and sizes but because we have um, cooked the rice more than halfway it's not going to be a problem all is going to be well and if you see to the side of zucchini I've just had extra stuffing and I decided to stuff some zucchini but it does freeze up in the freezer for about two months or you can just boil it and have yourself some stuffing <laughs> 
continuing to put that in my pan and now for the cooking liquid you're gonna saute about four cloves of garlic in about a fourth of a cup of olive oil and then you're gonna add about three to four cups of water along with two heaping tablespoons of that red pepper paste if you don't have red pepper paste you can put about one tablespoon of tomato paste keep in mind that is more acidic so you only want one tablespoon instead of two and then we are gonna pour that all over the cabbage like you see me do here. You don't need to put a plate on top, just cover it with some foil. You're then going to put this in a 400 degree oven for about two hours. Check around an hour and a half and see how much you have left. If your oven is too hot, crank down the heat. If it's not, crank it up. You can always take one and see how it tastes. And here you have it after about two hours, nice and caramelized. Those potatoes have absorbed that cooking liquid, the juices that came out from the ground beef, and it is just perfect. Get yourself some pita bread. I know there's some rice in there, but we're double carbon. Get yourself some bread and dip those potatoes in that, and you're good to go. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you next time on Simply Maha, where we are simple but never basic.